So my name is Seung Won, uh, and people call me Sebastian too. Uh, and I'm a, a assistant professor uh, at UT South Citizen Medical Center. And I just started uh, a month ago, um, and I'm really excited to uh, to um, about the getting connected with people in the AKN. And before I start, I want to thank uh, the AKN organizing committee and also Dr. Han for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to introduce my lab uh, to the community. Uh, and my lab is a brand new lab, so um, I don't have much new data to present, though we are really eager to uh, start doing research uh, right now. So today uh, I'll uh, give you an overview of my uh, postdoc work and uh, the research directions of my own lab. And focusing on this ascending somatosensory circuitry that shapes uh, the perception of touch and pain. The skin is the largest uh, sensory organ. So we sense the physical world around us through our skin. So it is hard to imagine life without a sense of touch. So imagine you cannot feel the touch or hug of your loved ones. But that'll be really uh, truly uh, detrimental. So every day we experience myriad uh, somatic sensory stimuli through our skin and not just hugs from loved ones, but also warm showers and uh, mosquito bite and sore muscles after a workout. All these uh, tactile, thermal, itch, and nociceptive signals are detected by peripheral sensory neurons and then propagated into the spinal cord and transmitted to the brain through ascending spinal pathways. So many subtypes of primary sensory neurons that innervate the skin and detect a wide range of somatic sensory stimuli have been identified and well characterized. So for example, there are low threshold uh, mechanoreceptor neurons that detect uh, distinct features of light touch. And there are thermoreceptors and high threshold mechanoreceptors and proreceptors that detect the thermal and strong mechanical and each stimuli uh, given onto the skin. And in the field, these are the genes uh, that we use to label each of these subtypes of primary sensory neurons and we have genetic handles for each one of them. In contrast, uh, very little is known about how these peripheral signals are integrated and processed within the spinal cord and how these signals are conveyed uh, to the brain by spinal projection neurons uh, to generate somatosensory perception and behavior responses. And these uh, projection neurons are attractive therapeutic substrates for treating the somatosensory disorders such as pain because they are somatosensory gateways uh, to the brain. So the goal of my postdoc work was to determine the organizational logic of the ascending somatosensory pathways. So instead of going to the, the detail of the, the work, I'll just summarize the two main findings of the work. Uh, so first, the traditional view of the ascending pain pathways emphasize the involvement of this one uh, population, uh, the TECR1, which is also called uh, the substance P receptor, uh, positive projection neurons in transmitting all the nociceptive signals from the spinal cord to the brain. However, the therapeutic strategies in humans that target uh, these uh, neurons and also the substance P receptor itself to treat pain uh, have not been successful, suggesting that there exist additional, uh, this TECR1 negative projection neurons that also convey pain signals to the brain. So through uh, my uh, postdoc work, we identified this novel subset of projection neurons, which are the GPR83 positive neurons that also convey pain signals to the brain. And we showed that these two pathways can cooperate uh, to transmit a variety of somatosensory signals, including uh, noxious stimuli. And the second finding uh, was that uh, this newly identified uh, the pathway uh, conveys not only pain signals, but also touch signals to the brain. So to give you a, a little bit of background, the textbook view of the touch pathway emphasized this dorsal column video lemniscal pathway, where the, uh, the touch signals are first detected by a low threshold and cannon receptor uh, neuron, gentle touch neurons. And then these touch signals are transmitted to uh, the deep dorsal horn, and then transmitted to the brainstem directly or through the deep dorsal home projection neurons. And then these 
tactile signals are, are further transmitted to the thalamus and somatosensory cortex. In contrast, uh, the traditional view of the pain and temperature transmission starts with uh, nociceptors or the thermal receptors that detect a noxious or thermal uh, stimuli. And these pain and temperature signals are transmitted to the superficial uh, dorsal horn in the spinal cord, and then transmitted to the brain through uh, enterolateral uh, the pathway, uh, which is kind of known to be uh, the pain pathway. So this is, uh, so this is uh, classical uh, touch pathway, and this is classical um, the pain and temperature pathway. However, we show that uh, this novel uh, GPRA3 positive ascending pathway forms a unique uh, touch pathway within the enterolateral tract, the pain tract. They receive both a high threshold and low threshold mechanical receptor inputs and convey these touch signals to the, uh, the region in the pons, which in turn broadcasts uh, these tactile signals to uh, the downstream brain regions that influence social and uh, emotional behaviors such as amygdala and hypothalamus. So we think that this GPRA3 pathway forms an effective uh, touch pathway. So that was a summary of my postdoc work and um, kind of extending and also expanding from my postdoc work. My lab is interested in studying the functional organization of the ascending somatosensory circuitry and use this knowledge uh, to understand how internal and disease states alter uh, our sense of touch and pain and then identify uh, potential therapeutic substrates uh, that can be exploited to restore uh, the normal uh, sensation of touch and pain. So my lab is interested in uh, the three main uh, research directions. So first, uh, to define the function of uh, the circuit modules of enterolateral pathway that contribute to distinct aspects of somatic sensation. So in my postdoc work, uh, my research mainly focused on one pathway, but uh, spinal projection neurons talk to many other regions of the brain. And I believe that these different ascending modules uh, play a unique function in spinal sensory perception. So I'm interested in studying other, other ascending pathways as well. And the second direction uh, is to investigate the dis dysfunction of the ascending uh, circuitry in disease states, such as uh, the cancer pain and autism. And touch and pain sensitivity is known to be altered in these disease states. And considering that uh, the spinal projection neurons are some sensory gateways to the brain and the gating of their activities uh, need to be tightly controlled uh, to maintain the normal touch and pain sensation, I think these uh, extending pathways can be a good uh, potential uh, therapeutic uh, targets for treating disorders associated with touch and pain. And third, uh, to uncover the circuit mechanism that underlie context-dependent uh, perception of touch and pain. So touch and pain are uh, subjective uh, experiences that are greatly modulated by internal states. So for example, the wounded soldiers in the battlefield often do not experience uh, significant pain and a gentle touch uh, can be pleasant or unpleasant depending on the context. So I'm interested in exploring uh, this uh, state-dependent uh, touch and pain perception. To uh, address these uh, questions, my lab will use a variety of neural circuit analysis uh, tools. So first of all, um, it is important to understand the structure of the system because the form uh, tells you about the function of the system. So we will utilize a variety of anatomical analysis tools, including uh, viral tracing, and sparse labeling and tracing of the signal neurons, for example. And of course, it is important to understand the response properties of these, each component of the circuit and their changes in different states. So we will employ uh, different physiological anal analysis tools, including in vivo multi uh, recordings and fiber photometry, miniscope imaging and weight being, being animals, and also the in vitro site physiology. And we will use optogenetic and chemogenetic tools uh, that enable the perturbation of specific circuit components to assess the system level uh, changes, changes manifested as different uh, behavioral outputs. And really the key to all these approaches is uh, mouse genetic tools that allow us to see and listen and manipulate uh, the neural circuits for touch and pain at the level of molecules and cells and two systems.
네, 그래서 발표는 여기까지였고요. 그리고 간단히 저 소개를 아까 한성 박사님께서 해주셨는데 다시 한번 드리면 네, 저는 이제 막그 티사스에서 아, 시작을 했고요, 랩을. 아, 그리고 어, 메인 그 프라이머리 디파이먼트는 사이카이트이고 그 다음에 뉴로사이언스랑 이제 에너지지어가 이제 세컨드리티 있고요. 그리고 이제 학부랑 석사는 칼스에서 하고 이제 박사를 하버드로 나와서 또 같이 하버드에서 이제 포스닥을 하고 이제 랩을 네, 시작했습니다. 그래서 이게 최근에 찍은 랩 시작하면서 찍은 사진이고요. 지금은 저 혼자 있고 이제 사람들이 이제 하여 하려고 이제 하고 하고 있습니다. 감사합니다.